Welcome to Maintaining a Balance video 14. In this video, we're going to be focusing on how urine concentration changes uh, between different organisms and depending on the environment in which they live. We're going to be looking uh, most commonly at our mammals, but also at our fish that live in both uh, saltwater and freshwater environments. And we're going to look at how those environments affect the amount and concentration of waste that they produce. So if we're talking about urine concentration, urine can be concentrated. So the urine is high in solutes or it can be diluted uh, in which it's watery and low in solutes. The way in which organisms can produce um, urine with these different concentrations is by highly specialised excretory systems. To produce urine, it requires energy and it's a specialised function that organisms undertake. Here we have a quick table that summarises the difference in urine concentration between mammals, freshwater fish and marine fish as instructed by the dot point. So mammals um, vary their concentration and the volume of the urine that they produce depending on the amount of water their body requires but also uh, whether they need to reabsorb or secrete some of their dissolved substances. Freshwater fish produce large volumes of urine um, that's usually quite dilute. And we've got marine fish, which produce highly concentrated small volumes of urine. The nitrogenous waste that the body produces is in the form of ammonia, which is a result of the breakdown of um, proteins, so the metabolism of proteins. In large volumes, ammonia is quite toxic. Ammonia, though, can be excreted in a few forms. So we've got ammonia, urea, or uric acid. And ammonia, um, when it is converted to urea or uric acid, they become less toxic, but as that progresses along that process, it does require more energy. Here we can see the differences between ammonia, urea, and uric acid, and the different organisms which produce those um, types of nitrogenous waste. So ammonia is quite toxic, but it can be released continuously and directly into water by our aquatic organisms. It quickly disperses in the water, and it doesn't take any energy to make it. And that's where we usually see fish and some aquatic animals and invertebrates. Urea is a less toxic form than ammonia. It can be hold for, held for longer in the body, so we hold it in our bladder. It, it can be excreted periodically, but it requires more energy um, to make than it does to produce ammonia. And then we usually see urea um, produced by terrestrial mammals. And then we have uric acid, which is a dry paste because there's lots of uh, water conservation. It's the least toxic form of nitrogenous waste. It can also be released periodically, but it does require the most amount of energy to produce. And we see that in the form of paste that is produced by insects and birds. Here we have an image of the, um, the way in which the nitrogenous waste of um, freshwater fish is produced. So we can see that they live in an environment that's low in salts. So they um, are gaining lots of water by osmosis. So therefore, they're excreting lots and lots of water, but they're trying to reabsorb lots and lots of salt, um, which they need to keep rather than expel to their environment. Here we see the difference um, between a marine fish. So uh, we're actually seeing the marine fish lose a lot of water uh, to maintain the balance of solutes both inside and outside of the fish. So that means that the um, the fish is drinking, drinking lots of water, but they need to uh, retain that water. So they're excreting concentrated urine but that has a very little water in it. Here we can see the difference in the concentration of urine between different organisms and how we can see the, the shape of their nephrons changing. Um, we can see that when we go to the spinifex hopping mouse, their loop of Henley, Henley is much bigger than the freshwater fish in the terrestrial mammal. And that's because they need a lot more space to absorb water because they're living in um, very hot climates. Here we can see um, that it's completely different to that of an insect. Thank you for watching video 14. Make sure you tune in for video 15.